It's the spring of 1979. Time is running out for All in the Family. The beloved Norman Lear sitcom is in its ninth and final season. As production starts to wrap, the writers turn in an episode called Stephanie's Father Returns to tie up some loose storylines. But within a few weeks after the episode's taping, and before it had even aired, two of the episode's guest stars would be found dead, both murdered in separate Hollywood apartments. This is the story of one of the most cursed episodes in TV history. In Hollywood, there are those actors who many consider that guys. Actors whose faces are ubiquitous in guest starring and sidekick roles, but whose names no one can ever remember. Victor Killian was just such a guy. Starting in 1929, Killian appeared in 170 or so films over the next 50 years, always with only a few lines, and almost always uncredited for his work. Yet by the mid-70s, Killian was having a bit of a career resurgence. In 1975, Norman Lear cast him in the Jefferson's second season, and hired him again a year later to play the Fernwood Flasher on the soap satire Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. So when Lear was looking to cast the second last episode of All in the Family, he turned to Killian. That episode, Stephanie's Father Returns, has to do with Archie and Edith Bunker going to a flop house to confront the birth father of a girl in their charge. We know it's a flop house the moment Archie steps in and offers an exaggerated nose pinch. Behind the desk of this seedy motel is an aged clerk, played by Victor Killian. After Lear cast that role, he looked to cast a prototypical lobby bum to fill out that scene. And for that part, Lear also dipped into Hollywood's vast pool of unsung that guys. Charles Wagenheim also broke into pictures in 1929. Though fame had eluded him, he made a solid living playing anonymous walk-on or background roles. And like Killian, he was almost always uncredited for his work. In 1945, Wagenheim appeared in 13 films, but only received on-screen credit for three of those. By 1979, at age 83, he had appeared in nearly 250 film and TV productions, often playing roles such as shop owner or panhandler. Perfect, Lear thought, for the role of the bum in the Flophouse lobby. Taping of the episode occurred in February 1979, now, it's unknown if Killian and Wagenheim recognized each other on set that day. They had appeared in two films together, 1951's The Tall Target and 1929's Gentlemen of the Press. But by all accounts, the taping went off without a hitch. However, within three weeks, both Killian and Wagenheim would be murdered. On Tuesday, March 6th, 1979, Wagenheim was at home in a Hollywood apartment he shared with his 78-year-old wife, Lillian. Lillian had suffered a stroke, and Charles was unable to care for her himself. So he hired Stephanie Boone, a 24-year-old practical nurse, to help out. Now we use the term practical nurse to differentiate Boone's duties from that of a medical nurse. Though she cared for Lillian, she also looked after the Wagenheim's living conditions as well. Charles would give Stephanie a few signed blank checks and ask her to buy groceries and whatnot. She had also cleaned and did the couple's laundry. Now, on that Tuesday, Stephanie went down to the apartment's laundry room to change loads. But when she returned, she was horrified to find the elderly actor dead, face down on his bedroom floor. Having been savagely bludgeoned on the head while his wife sat by herself in the living room in the next room unaware. When Hollywood Division Police Captain Mark Croker arrived at 8078 Fairholme Drive, he noted that there was an open rear window to the apartment and that it didn't look like anything was stolen. Croker tried to question Lillian, but answers were not forthcoming. Confined to a chair, she managed to communicate that she heard nothing while the murder was taking place next door. Without more leads to go on, the LAPD put a pin in their investigation until five days later when, less than a mile away, Victor Killian was found dead in a similar fashion. On Sunday, March 11th, Vic Killian Jr. arrived at his father's luxury apartment, the Lido Apartments, worried that he couldn't get a hold of his dad by phone. 
Discovering the door open, Vic was horrified to find the place ransacked and his father dead from a beating. Slumped in his easy chair in front of the TV, a half-eaten sandwich in his lap. When Detective Bernard Skiles arrived, he noted that the door wasn't broken into, indicating that Killian knew his attacker and possibly led him into the apartment. The beating murders of two elderly actors within one week and one mile of each other caused many to wonder if the two were somehow connected. Said Detective Skiles to the papers, we're checking out all leads and also that possibility. But their investigation into a link didn't take long. By March 14th, Rampart Detective Lieutenant James Troutman told the papers they were certain there was no connection between the two crimes. The similarities in both cases were mere coincidence, he said, because Killian and Wagenheim were killed by, quote, different weapons and by, quote, different means of attack. By May of that year, police in both cases were out of leads, but they had at least one good suspect, the Wagenheim's nurse, Stephanie Boone. On Friday, May 25th, homicide detective Steve Hodell caught up to Boone where she was working at the time at the Los Angeles County Animal Shelter and booked her for Charles' brutal murder along with a charge of grand theft and forgery. She was held in lieu of $100,000 bail. Now, in her confession, Boone admitted she beat Wagenheim with a table leg after the actor accused her of stealing blank checks for her own personal use. On January 28, 1980, Stephanie Boone was sentenced to six years in prison for voluntary manslaughter, but she claimed and police believe she had nothing to do with Victor Killian's murder, which today remains unsolved. On March 25th, 1979, the All in the Family episode Stephanie's Father Returns aired on CBS, with no on-screen memoriam for either actor, uncredited, it seems, to the very end.